Hi everyone and welcome to a tutorial on load groups, load combinations and load cases. Now I know those uh, phrases might uh, be a little bit confusing so hopefully this video can help um, explain the differences, explain how they can be used to you know, um, check different um, scenarios or different cases when you're uh, performing a structural analysis. Um, so today we're going to explore those different um, features and explain how you best you can use those um, to create your load com combinations. Um, so yeah, the, the way we've designed this feature is we've really tried to um, make it really easy to use and intuitive uh, while also um, allowing a great range of, of functionality and, and flexibility so that you can um, you know, apply different load combinations in, in different scenarios that you want to apply uh, in your own way. So kind of a, a fine line between uh, usability and flexibility. So we've tried to kind of meet in the middle somewhere where the features are quite easy to use once you once you get a grasp of them and really powerful and really flexible to account for all the different scenarios that you might need to consider in your um, structural analysis models. So I've got a very simple frame that we're gonna use as an example. Um, and I'm just gonna start by just adding some of these loads so I'll add, uh, first of all, an area load. So I'm just going to um, add it to this barrier here. So two, five, seven, three. Uh, we'll make it a one-way one load and pressure magnitude is 0.5 KSF. And I've got my uh, column beam direction as two to five. So I'll just show you what, what that would do. So that's going to apply to these members. But if I click that and just change that to five to seven, uh, we will see that sort of behavior. So that's really helpful. If I change my model, it'll auto adjust um, and the variance is, is checked out there. And the, the area I want to really focus on is, is the load group. So by default, it'll, it'll assign a load group of LG, um, which is sort of a default name. But what we want to do here is we want to actually provide more accurate um, naming of, of what these loads are. So I'm going to apply a dead load here. Um, so I can, I can call these whatever I like. Um, but in that case, um, yeah, we're going to kind of stick to some standard load groups or load cases that we usually, um, you know, apply in, in standard structural design. So I'm going to apply a dead load. Um, you know, maybe there's another load in the same same area. So two, five, seven, three. Uh, maybe it's a little less. Um, again, two, five to seven. And this might be some sort of live load. So I can see the second load is applied there. Um, I might also apply some some wind loads, and we've got a few different wind load um, you know methods you can use. We do have area loads that do um, a distributed loads in steps. So if you do have sort of a variable wind load, um, it's quite quite useful the column wind load uh, function. So um, again, we're going to pick four, three, seven, eight. We're going to pick that boundary to apply it. That's in the negative. X axis and we're just going to start with a zero. So elevation is sort of the distances between this member here and up here. So Y is 1.2. So we'll sort of step it up at the midpoint. So I'm just putting in the kind of area. So I've got zero to 0 0.6 and 0 0.6 to 1.2. And then I'll apply a uh, pressure of 0 0.5 and also 0 0.75. Um, up here, so it's a little bit higher of a wind load uh, up there. Beam direction is four to three, and this will be my wind load. So this could be like a wind specific wind load case A or case B. You can get quite specific with whatever these names are. Um, but yeah, you can see now that that's been applied and automatically calculated. Um, yeah, the variance and the the, the um, tributary width of these members here. So see the variance is checked out at one hundred percent, zero percent as well. So that means that all the pressure that I've, I've applied here, and I can look at the difference here. So all of this pressure um, has been applied uh, to these members with a 0% variance. So there's no loss of load there. Okay, so we've uh, applied wind load, dead load, live load. I might just apply, uh, I'm just gonna scroll down just to see the model. So I can just do that by holding S and scrolling. It's just a little shortcut. And I might just apply some last distributed loads here. Um, I'll double click to paste all the members there. 
uh, and maybe we'll call this last one. So it, it will show you the, the ones you've already assigned. So you can select one of these options um, or you know obviously add your own. So we'll do some snow load as well. And then if I scroll S back up, I'll see. Okay, so I've also got now distributed loads around the perimeter and those internal members um, that are defined as snow loads. So that's usually the first step is, is kind of defining your load groups um, as you're applying the different loads that, that you are to your model. Um, and I'll show you now where that kind of comes in as the second stage. So obviously um, in different scenarios, you, you wanna um, apply different load combinations. So you know there might be a case where there's snow loads but there's no wind loads or vice versa, there's wind loads and there's no snow loads. And a lot of these are um, specified in different design standards. So we're gonna just import them from the ASCE design standard. So he here's that area where I can apply the different load combinations. Um, this model actually already has load combinations, so I'll just go to the data sheet. You can see there already are some, but I'm just gonna remove them and we'll start again. Um, so yeah, you can apply them in sort of this way. Maybe you wanna apply a fact, dead load factor of 1.5 and a live load of 0 0.8 or 0 0.9. Um, and that might be one load case that's sort of dead plus 0 0.8 live. Like that's kind of a very generic uh, phrase you can use. Sorry, it would be 1.5 dead uh, plus 0 0.8 live. And then you can see the rest are all turned off. So that's why we just ignore them. Um, so what it's doing is in this load combination, it's applying a f an extra 50% on the dead loads but reducing the live load by 20%, and then it's not applying any snow load or any self-weight load or any um, wind loads as well. So um, you can see how you can use these to control and apply um, the, the, the forces in different ways um, that are completely within your control. Um, and what I'll do is I'll just, again, I'll clear that. Now that we've seen it, just a very simple example. And I'll load them in from, from the design standard. So we already have these specified, makes it a lot easier so you want to apply a ASCE, um, you know, LRFD design standard. Um, you can display those, and it's already imported them all from the from the design code. So you can see the 1.4G um, and all the different sort of cases. And what we'll do is just we'll assign the load cases. So in order to to use these uh, load combinations. We just need to tell the software what our um, naming convention that we used earlier um, means in their design standard. So it's a pretty easy step. Um, you just kind of like I've named this one live load, so obviously that's a live load. Uh, I've also named this one snow load, so I'm going to make that a snow load. But you know, might be want more want to be more specific about what type of snow load that is. Uh, self weight is usually a dead load, and then wind load case A would be obviously a wind load. So I'm just sort of linking or assigning the, the naming conventions I applied to what's read by the design standard, um, which is a pretty simple step, it only has to be done once. Um, and then I'll import those. And there is this other option here. So if you do have a lot of different cases, like wind load cases, um, you know, you don't want to apply them all at once. So what this will do is actually expand the load combinations to consider all the different directions. Um, which is, is really quite useful um, in you know, real scenarios where you've applied wind loads in different, different, um, from different directions. Because obviously you don't want to be um, combining those as a, into a single load combination. You want to create separate cases where the wind load is strong in you know, direction A versus strong in direction B. Um, in this case, I've only got one set of wind loads, so I don't really need to expand that. So um, I'll just go ahead and import. And now I can see, um, much like before, uh, we've got the data sheet, which is really quite useful to review all the different load combinations. Um, and I can apply those. Um, so that's a pretty pretty simple process um, of yeah, applying the cases, applying those cases into load combinations, and then we're pretty much ready to solve now. And we can review the different results that the load cases, the load combinations will bring. So you can view these from the left um, drop down menu. So here we've got all the different load combinations. And I'll just switch on a simple result just so we can visualize, you know, the different cases. 
Um, maybe maybe deflection might be a, a good one. So we can see this is uh, just a 1.4 times the dead load. Um, 1.2 times dead load plus live load. So you've got all the different um, individual cases here. Um, to review, maybe we can look at a wind load one. So you can see that um, yeah, maybe I didn't apply a strong enough wind load, but usually I have some lateral force. So you can see some lateral de deflection there. Um, that wouldn't be in the other cases because this is the only case that's applied a, a wind load factor there. Um, you also get the individual load cases. So uh, the load cases are the ones we specified as per ASCE, but also the load groups. These are the ones that we manually defined. Um, so yeah, if we look at just that wind load case A, we can see you know, that's where the deflection is occurring, obviously from that lateral wind load force. Um, and this bracing is holding it up on this side, but not really on that side. So you can sort of identify and, and query and dive deeper into the different load groups, as well as the load combinations, which obviously are design requirements. Uh, then we also have the envelope max. So this will show um, the worst case in all of the different load combinations and load cases, load groups. So this will sort of give us each member by member worst case scenario. So we can base our designs on this. Um, it just saves us going through each of all, all of these and finding the worst case for each member and designing accordingly. This will just tell us what is the worst, like the, the worst case scenario for each of these members and display that result. Um, so that's really quite useful. Something similar in, in the results summary, it will, it will scan through all the different load combinations and just highlight key um, results of interest, which is quite quite useful. Um, yeah, you can also turn on if you want to sort of visualize and compare, um, you know, the envelope results to maybe one of these other cases or even two cases side by side. Uh, you can sort of control here and and add different colors and review sort of, uh, say for, this, for instance, this member, we're reviewing the envelope absolute case, so the worst case scenario versus the um, ULS2, um, which has some dead load and live load applied to it. So you can sort of uh, compare and contrast different load combinations. Um, obviously, if you go back, uh, you can change these, add these, um, you know, apply different load combinations, whatever it is that you want to um, test. Uh, it's also quite quite useful um, to review some of these visibility settings. So, um, you know, you can turn all the loads off. Maybe you just want to look at the dead loads or sort of just look at the live loads. Um, you can also color, like if you've got them all on, kind of color um, the load groups as well. So you can see, um, you know, at a global level, all the different loads on, but you've also sort of identifying where the dead loads are, for instance, and where the wind loads are. Uh, it's quite quite useful if you've got sort of a larger model. Um, yeah, looking at the equivalent loads. Yeah, so on a larger model, you can sort of see where the load cases are coming from. Maybe turn all these off, and you just want to look at the wind loads and compare those. It's quite useful um, to review the different cases, uh, things like that. So I hope that helps. Um, yeah, once, once you sort of get your head around them, they're really quite powerful and easy to, easy to work with. Um, so if you have any questions, feel free to, to email us at support at Otherwise, always feel free to hit the uh, live chat button. Uh, we have engineers available to help uh, with any of your questions. So yeah, look forward to um, hearing your comments. Thank you.